शिव शक्तुक्त यदि शक्त प्रभावित न चेदेव देव न खलु कुशल स्पंदी अथस्वाध्यंग हरिहर विरिंचादिरपी प्रणंतुम स्तोतुम वाकतमकृतपुण्या प्रभवती नमस्ते so i want to talk a little bit about celibacy what actually is the purpose of celibacy in the spiritual path well it has to do with the four darshanams chatur darshanam or views of spiritual life and the transitions between them very important huh? let's take a look at our good old chart review it just for a second there are four views in human life huh pashus are animals maybe they're walking on two legs <laughs> but because they have no yoga they don't get any real benefit from human life then there's dvaita vada vishishta dvaita vada vivarta vada and ajata vada and these are the stages of spiritual progress spiritual life the path okay and they lead to different results uh, punya prema shunya and brahman by means of the four different yogas karma yoga bhakti yoga raja yoga and gnana yoga so all well and good you've all seen this chart a bunch of times if you're following this channel but what about the transitions between the the different views how does one get from dvaita vada for example to vishishta dvaita vada and what exactly is the mechanism of the transitions between them now let me just tell you how i came across this knowledge because it's really cool <laughs> the other day my sanyasi guru left his body i was very fortunate i was there and i'm going to cover that in detail in another video but the point is i stayed with his body all day while it was being prepared for cremation and i got to meditate deeply in the presence and i found him huh it took a while because he was so high i mean he was really really high but i found him i tracked him down <laughs> and he inspired me to read a certain passage in the lalita sahasranam i'm going to get it here Now Lalita Sahasranam is the thousand names of Shakti. And so I read this passage and it lit up so much understandings. Let me read it for you. Om Muladharaika Nilayaya Namaha. Salutations to her whose chief residence is the Muladhara. the muladhara chakra the root chakra at the base of the spine she is in another passage she is called kundalini huh kundalini kunda huh she is the coiled serpent at the base of the spine but then what aum brahma granti vibhedhinyai namaha salutations to her who in her ascent from the muladhara breaks through the brahma granti the barrier of brahma to the subtle dimension and then aum manipurantar uditaya namaha salutations to her who then emerges in the manipura chakra the heart chakra 
ఓం విష్ణు గ్రంథి విభేదన్యాయ నమ salutations to her who then breaks through the vishnu granti the barrier to still subtler dimensions om agnya chakra nartantala lasthaya namaha salutations to her who next abides in the center of the agnya chakra om rudra granti vibhedanya namaha salutations to her who finally breaks through the rudra granti the barrier to the subtlest dimension om sahasraram bujarudhaya namaha salutations to her who then ascends to the thousand petaled lotus known as the sahasrara and finally om Suddha Sarabhi Varshanyai Namaha Salutations to her who sends streams of nectar spiritual bliss from the transcendent moon in the Sahasrara So here you have a picture of Shakti as Kundalini arising from her coiled base in the root chakra and rising up th- through the shushumna the shushumna is the central spinal channel channel cerebrospinal fluid until she reaches the sahasrara chakra and that's bliss that's full enlightenment that's completion so this channel in the shakta tradition is known as the kula kula means home huh home like a family home where you, where you grow up right so she is living she that this is her home in the body is in this channel the shushumna so the uh, those who practice this kundalini yoga are known as kaula huh kaula bodies they practice the worship of the goddess in her home in the body now what does she do she passes through penetrates through these three knots the brahma granta the vishnu granta and the rudra uh, granta at the end now let's look at our chart again and we see that these three knots are actually the transitions between the different views on the path the brahma granta is the transition between dvaita vada and vishishta dvaita vada right and then she resides in the heart so what does this mean uh, let's look into it well what does brahma do brahma creates the worlds the planetary systems the different material elements uh he creates all this he creates the bodies of the living beings as well their senses and their different qualities and so on so when we're in dvaita vada we see the world as real we see the body as the self uh that's the view the vada of uh this dvaita vada is karma yoga that means we utilize the material energies and elements in such a way as to be pleasing to god so we perform various ceremonies under vedic injunctions rules and regulations why to uh accumulate punya or merit or subha karma good karma then this good karma qualifies us gives us the adhikar to transition to the next stage but what has to happen in order to make that transition the force or pressure of the kundalini has to be sufficient to break through the brahma granta so the brahma granta 
means attachment to the material creation, which is Brahma's business. Huh? When we're attached to the body, attached to the senses, attached to the views that we get through the senses as being real, as long as we maintain those attachments, we cannot break through that granta. Brahma will stop us. No, this is real. Huh? But when the Kundalini achieves a sufficient pressure to break through that knot and reach the heart center, then this is a moment known as the change in heart. Uh, my Adi Guru used to speak very eloquently about this. The change in heart is when one realizes, oh, this love of God, this is actually more beautiful than anything I can experience through the senses. Huh? Bhakti rasa. When one realizes bhakti rasa, then the enjoyments of the senses become very insignificant. Huh? Of course, we still take care of the needs of the body and so forth, but we're not attached to them. We're not hung up on them. We can now control them more or less effortlessly. So the purpose of Tantra, in Tantra, we engage in some kind of sexual activity according to our taste, but we avoid orgasm. And what does this do? It increases the pressure of the kundalini. See? So the practice of celibacy is often found to be uh, associated with breaking through these knots and reaching the next level, the next stage on the path. So then let's take a look at the next one. Huh? So there one, the, you're, you're situated in the Anahata chakra, the heart chakra, practicing bhakti rasa, right? So what's the attachment here? Now you're attached to names and qualities and especially emotions. So even though those are qualities of God in one's uh, ishta devata, uh, the, the particular form of God and the particular pastimes of God that one wishes to serve. There's still attachments. And because of that, one gets held back. And this is the Vishnu Granta. The Vishnu Granta is the knot of name and form. So one has to break through that knot as well. That means, again, celibacy or tantra has to be practiced until the pressure, the energy of the kundalini is strong enough to break through the knot of Vishnu and reach the Agnya Chakra. And then what? Uh, one practices Raja Yoga to realize Shunya, emptiness. And emptiness, of course, is the negation of all name and form. And when one realizes emptiness perfectly, but then one is qualified to break through the Shiva Granta. The Shiva Granta leads to the Sahasrara. So, right at this point, I want to say something very, very significant that the sadhana, such as celibacy or tantra practice, whether you are, if you're on the samana path, uh, you practice celibacy. If you're on the kaula path, you practice tantra. Either way, they lead to the same phenomenon, which is breaking through the grantas. Uh, the, the sadhana, whether it be tantra, kaula, uh, or Samana, mainly rituals and chanting and stuff like that. The sadhana is something we can do. But breaking through these knots is something that happens to us. It's something that Shakti does. Not something we can do. All we can do is develop the adhikar, 
the qualification for this breakthrough. She has to give the blessing. She's the one who is delivering the nectar, huh? the bliss from the Sahasrara. So she's the one who is always pushing us on one side and pulling us on the other side to go higher and higher until we reach the ultimate. Uh, so <laughs> I want to say this because many people think they can do enlightenment. No, no. Enlightenment, realization, is something that happens to you. You are the object, not the subject. <laughs> of the self-realization. So that said, one does have to do sadhana to qualify for these breakthroughs and allow the kundalini to rise. Right? And trying to manipulate the kundalini is very, very uh, wrong thing to do. We'll get you in trouble. Huh? She doesn't like to be bossed around. <laughs> Trust me. <laughs> she will slap you around. <laughs> if you try to control her. So leave the energy alone. Do the practices and the result will come all by itself. Aum Tat Sat. Aum Harihi Aum. <laughs>